Well, this isn't the story I was hoping to tell. Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I am Brian. Yeah, the no Jessica or Elsie today. They're off in another part of the house working on some stuff and I'm gonna go work on some stuff once I finish up this video. But if you remember in our last video, we said we were gonna take a little bit of a break and uh, after that break was, was uh, coming to its end, uh, I was ready to go to get back into making videos and starting to work on more recipes and, and getting back to our plant-based roots on this channel. Um, but right before we are going to get into that kind of stuff, I had a couple of little medical tests that I needed to get through, mainly an upper endoscopy and a colonoscopy. And so I started recording a video about all the, the prep stuff for the colonoscopy and all of that. Uh, and that video has, it, it, it has been scrapped and, uh, and I, I'm, I'm not going to finish it, but, uh, you may be asking, why am I getting these tests in the first place? So that takes us back to last July. Last July, I ended up getting really, really sick to my stomach. Uh, and I mean, I've gotten sick to my stomach before, perfectly fine, but this time around, I didn't seem to get better completely. I got mostly better, but I was still having problems. I was like super gassy like way beyond any normal plant-based gassy level. And uh, I was just having pain occasionally and I was feeling a bit nauseous at times and like it was just, it, I wasn't normal, right? So I go through the month of July and uh, I tell Jessica, hey, I'm still having these problems. She's like, okay, well, let's call your doctor, get an appointment set up. So I call my general practitioner up, say, hey, uh, I'm having the, you know, like some stomach issues, can I come in and, and chat? Uh, and in August, I ended up seeing him and he goes, okay, well, let's get you in to see a gastroenterologist. He's like, we'll, we'll set, we'll, we'll get, get that whole thing set up and get that thing rolling. In the meantime, though, we're going to put you on omeprazole or Prilosec, which is a proton pump inhibitor. Basically it decreases the amount of stomach acid that you have in your stomach. And, um, uh, that actually, uh, really has helped didn't didn't cure anything but it definitely helped with a lot of the symptoms that I was having uh, but in the meantime between seeing my doctor and uh, and seeing the gastroenterologist you know we had a baby and we lived in Columbus Ohio for the month before and the month after and uh, you know so I couldn't really like go back and see a doctor in st. Louis very easily so I postponed seeing the gastroenterologist until uh, much, much later. Uh, I believe January or early February is when I ended up actually seeing him. So I go to see him. I tell him all of my symptoms, saying I'm having gas, uh, pain. Sometimes I'm, I'm getting nauseous uh, and like all of this. And he goes, well, I think you have dyspepsia. He goes, we can do an upper endoscopy. We can take some samples and uh, figure out what this whole thing is and all that. And he goes, and since, you know, you're over the age of 40, I'm 41 right now. Uh, he goes, let's go ahead and do a colonoscopy anyway. He goes, why wait to 45? We can do it now. He's like, and then, then you'll be fine. And I'm like, cool, great. That'll be great. Uh, and that'll make a great video for, for, you know, getting more information out there, telling people to actually, you know, go and get the, the colonoscopies done, go and get mammograms done, go and, you know, like, you know, us, we are very big advocates of getting checked out. Uh, and so I was hoping to do that video about all the colonoscopy prep and uh, all of that, which was, you know, it definitely was not fun. But uh, if I have to do one again, I'll totally do a video about it though. <laughs> but until then, go get yourself checked out if you need to get checked out, obviously. Um, so I see the gastroenterologist. He tells me all this stuff. He goes, all right, let's get it on the books that, you know, we're going to come and get these, these tests done. So that was a little bit over a week ago. And uh, I go in, they knock me out, they do the upper endoscopy, nothing change, nothing big there. They do the colonoscopy and uh, I wake up and the doctor's like, all right, we, we found a sizable polyp 
in there. We took some biopsies. We were unable to remove the polyp, uh, but we we marked it so that way it's like we need to go back in. We can we can possibly remove that later. And I'm like, okay, so they're going to check it out. They're going to buy. It. You know, they they're going to send it off to pathology and make sure that everything's okay. And uh, you know, and all the doctor didn't seem that super concerned about it. Later on, when I talked to the gastroenterologist, though, like when he was giving me the, the, the report, he actually did tell me that I was the hardest colonoscopy he's ever done because apparently I have a very long, large intestine. He's like, you have a lot of redundant colon. And I was like, that's wild. Like, I, I, I had no idea. Obviously, he said it, he's like, it loops around in like different places and he's like, it twists and stuff. And I was like... I never, never had a had a reason to suspect that there was anything going on with my large intestine. I figured I was just about normal like everybody else. But he said no, nope, very difficult. They couldn't get, they couldn't do all the stuff there. But uh, just to sort of jump ahead a little bit with that one, the pathology report came back completely benign. He said it's uh, it's an inflammation polyp, and so he's like, we don't really have to do anything with it. He goes, maybe if we if there's uh, we can go back, we'll get like a more serious, uh, you know, a more dedicated person for the colonoscopy type stuff who's able to do better or has better equipment. Maybe they can remove the polyp later on. I'm like, okay, cool. That's fine. But jump back to the day of the colonoscopy. I finish all that stuff up. I go home and I'm just like freezing cold for some reason. And uh, like I took a hot shower and I got dressed up in pajamas and then I put on my robe and then I laid under two blankets and I'm just freezing. And Jessica's like, it's burning up in this place. What are you talking about? And I'm like, whatever, just, you know, let me sleep. So I go to sleep. Oh, and before I went to sleep, I checked my temperature, normal, you know, a little bit low actually. And then I woke up and I checked my temperature again and I had a fever of over a hundred. And I'm like, this is really weird. I checked a couple hours later. I didn't take anything either. I didn't take like any NSAIDs or anything like that. Checked, checked a couple hours later and I seem to be back to normal. And I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. Had a little bit to eat, uh, like some mashed potatoes and stuff. You know, I'm supposed to, they, you know, they recommended kind of like some more like softer foods. I'm like, okay, do that, go to sleep. I wake up at three in the morning and I'm in agony. Like most severe pain I've ever had in my life. And I'm just like, it, it just I'm gassy. You know, I'm having a flare-up of, of the previous thing that I had before. Maybe if I burp a few times or whatever, I'll, I'll be okay. From 3 o'clock until about 9 o'clock, I was awake in absolute agony. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. I tried everything that I knew. I took um, uh, semethicone, anti-gas pills. Uh, I took some Tylenol even, like, to, to try and, try and, like, numb some of the pain a little bit. Uh, like everything. I did everything that I, I, I knew to do to like try and mitigate this. And I was like, I can, I can, I can tough my way through this. I'll be fine. And right around nine o'clock, the pain got a little bit worse. And I told Jessica, I was like, okay, I think I need to go to the ER. This is, this is not normal. So keep in mind, this was also the day of Elsie's like six month birthday. And we were like going to have a fun day out and we were going to, you know, just just spend a great day with with Elsie and uh, and all that. And so in the morning, they she she we leave Elsie with my parents, and she drives me off to the ER. And there, you know, they they give me some some of the the good painkillers, and that helps a bit. And they're like, okay, we're 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 gonna we we think we know what's wrong, but we're gonna get a CT scan just to like make sure. So they wheel me off. They send me in. They do a CT scan, and it comes back. And uh, the ER doctor comes in and is like, so here's what we think is going on with your colon. Basically, the anesthesia and stuff that, that they did, it put your colon to sleep. So the stuff that you ate is just sitting like there in your colon. You've just got gas and fluid and stuff, and it's just built up inside of your colon. And so they're like, we're going to give you some stuff to like help, help that move along. And uh, she goes, but also, we found a mass on your kidney. And so we're like, wait, what? What do you mean a mass on, on my kidney? And she's like, well, you know, it's like with this, these types of cysts and stuff, they, they can pop up and, you know, they'll just 
cut them off and, and, and that'll be fine. But we're going to have somebody from urology check it out and come up and talk to you. Somebody from urology comes up and she's like, there's a, she's like, this is a solid mass. It has weird edges and it's about six centimeters by six and a half centimeters. And she's like, this is most likely cancer. And we're like, what? No, no. It's like other doctors said that it's a cyst and they're just going to like remove it eventually. And she's like, nope. Like they're like, when we see this kind of thing, this is most likely cancer. And so I then spend the next day, like overnight, uh, in the hospital, they give me fluids, they give me more drugs and stuff. And by the second day, I'm just like, I'm ready to get out of here. Please just let me leave. And, uh, and so they discharge me and I go home. But at that time, Jessica was like, well, you know, let's go ahead and get a second opinion and see if, if, uh, She's like, we, we, we know another urologist at, at my local hospital who we loved before, you know, when, when Jessica was going through her stuff with, um, when, when, uh, you know, she had to get the stent put in and all of that kind of stuff, a wonderful urologist over there. And, uh, she goes, we can talk to him or we can call Mayo Clinic and see if they'll take you on as a patient. She calls up Mayo Clinic. They're like, yeah, sure. Let's come on up. Uh, let's, let's get some tests. Let's do some things. So we drove up to Rochester, Minnesota the other day and uh, they did another CT scan. They did a urine test. They did like, you know, some, some stuff like that. Uh, because apparently whenever they, they find a mass in your kidney, they also check your chest because that's, that's like the next, your lungs are like the next likely place that cancer might have spread to. So just to let you know, everything with that was, was actually clear. Um, but we end up talking to the doctor at Mayo Clinic and he goes, there's like an 85% chance that this is cancer. 15% uh, chance that it's not, that it's completely benign. Uh, but he said, even if it is benign, it's in a weird spot. Like it's actually like, you know, inside your kidney with a bit poking out on top and all that. But he starts talking about, uh, the about how they like to do partial nephrectomies when it comes to this kind of stuff so they can still maintain some of the kidney that it can still function and all that kind of kind of thing. And uh, he tells me, he's like, well, if we do a partial nephrectomy, it's like we will do like a 3D printout, like a, uh, of, you know, like using a 3D printer of, of your tumor and everything. And then that's what we'll use to figure out how to do the actual surgery. And he goes, and then you get to keep that afterwards. And I was like, yes, this is awesome. Like, I get to keep this thing. I don't know why. I just thought, I mean, that'd be pretty cool. It's like a weird little uh, thing that I get to keep of, like, my kidney with this weird tumor, you know, thing on it. Um, but he he tells me, uh, you know, he starts telling me about, uh, you know, survival and stuff like that uh, when it comes to people who have a kidney removed, you know, if they've got one good functioning kidney. And... Uh, and all that and he tells me you know well a lot of this a lot of these issues stem from obesity and smoking he, he goes he knows that i wasn't a smoker and he knows that i'm not a drinker um and i go well i know i'm fat but uh i was like i'm still still over 100 pounds down from where i used to be and, and i said and then jessica goes yeah we lost a bunch of weight uh doing a whole food plant-based diet and he immediately lights up and he was like i was actually just about to suggest that and we're like wait really He's like, yeah. Uh, he goes, so I assume you, you've seen Forks Over Knives? I'm like, yes. It's like, I've, I've spoken with people who, you know, like worked at Forks Over Knives. And, uh, and, and I was like, you know, and I joked like, you know, we're kind of, you know, mildly famous in the whole food plant-based community. Um, but I, I, I told him, I was like, look, I promise to you, it was like, I know that I've, I've had the last couple of years that, you know, I've gained, gained weight back and, and I haven't been really taking care of myself you know, when Jessica was, was going through all the cancer treatments and stuff, I said, but I give you my word that I am going to lose this weight, that I am going to be the healthiest version of myself that I can be. And then he goes, okay. He's like, well, if that's the case, then I'm just going to remove the kidney. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. Uh, so the doctor was really great. He was, he was, uh, uh a delightful person to talk to um, and the entire department of all the people we, we spoke with, everyone is just so competent and so efficient and like everyone was so nice. So uh, 
in, in a, a week or so, we got to head back up there because I got to do a, uh, an, a biopsy of, of the kidney and, and the, the tumor because they want to make sure 100%, well, they, nothing can really be 100%, but they want to make sure that it is cancer. And then uh, another week or so after that, I'm getting surgery to remove my kidney. Uh, if it is, if it actually comes back as cancer, if it, it comes back as benign, then they're actually going to, just going to leave it alone for a while. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm kind of in the, in the opinion, I'm like, take it out. I don't really care at this point. Now, you hear the big scary word of cancer and you start to get a little scared and you start to worry and you start to wonder, you, you know, what is my life going to look like going forward? Am I going to have to go through all the stuff that Jessica went through? And that's kind of where the good news actually comes in. So if they find the tumor early, which it seems like they have caught this, like when it's just in the kidney itself, uh, survival rate, you know, for five years, uh, uh, which keep in mind, like most of the time people when they're diagnosed with this are in their 70s. Uh, but survival rate is like 90%. And the only treatment is either a partial nephrectomy or a radical nephrectomy, which means they either remove the tumor itself or they remove the entire kidney. And that's it. So I won't be getting chemo. I won't be getting radiation. I won't be getting immunotherapy. None of it. They're just going to take out the kidney. And then I'll have to get scans uh, every few months. Uh, I think it was six months at first. Uh, and they'll just keep checking on the other kidney and other spots and make sure that everything is going okay. Now, obviously there's gonna be a lot of questions and stuff and people are gonna ask, you know, well, how did this happen? You know, and especially to, I know whenever Jessica went through this the last time, a lot of people were like, well, if you were on a plant-based diet, then how did you get cancer? We're like, well, we don't know uh, because I've been overweight my entire life, even at the skinniest that I was doing, you know, 100% whole food plant-based, like, you know, I was still overweight, like, you know, and that, that level of obesity will catch up to you eventually, no matter what, like, I can't, I can't keep living like this, you know, at my, at my current weight. And so, but if you actually look at a lot of these things when it comes to what they call renal cell carcinoma, which is, which is what they believe it is, uh, these things have an incredibly slow growth rate. I could have had this tumor uh, for a decade uh, because some of the growth rate is like 0.3 centimeters a year. So if it's six by 6.5, like, you know, you, you do the math of 0.3 going back every year. Now, some of it can be, can be faster, some of it can be slower and all that, but like literally, I would have never known that I had this unless I had a colonoscopy that put my colon to sleep, sent me to the ER to get me a CT scan to then find out that I have this tumor in the first place. And so I know it's crazy, but to those of you who have watched the channel before, you know that I believe in God and I believe that he works in mysterious ways. And I believe that this whole sort of string of events fits together pretty nicely for me to get the treatment that I need to get done. But right now, you know, I'm doing well. I feel fine after after my stay in the ER and, uh, and, and all of that. I, I feel okay. Like I don't have any pain in my side or anything. It's not like I've had any symptoms of, uh, you know, I didn't notice like any blood in my urine or anything like that. And so uh, I, you know, they literally, they wouldn't have found this unless they did a scan. And so this is why I will always advocate for more tests for people, more scans for people, like whatever it happens to be. I just think that, I just think that uh, y there should be a lot higher level of testing for stuff in this country and around the world. I mean, heck, they could have done a urine test uh, even at, at any point in the last bit and they would have found some abnormalities and then it would have sent me to a urologist who probably would have done like a, a an ultrasound or something like that. Uh, I mean, like there's there's all sorts of levels of, of tests that can be done here that, you know, could possibly lead you to more serious things. The sad part about all this though, they still have no idea what's going on with my stomach. They still have no idea 
why I would get super gassy at times and have a lot of pain and stuff like that. Could have something to do with my large intestine. Maybe the polyp is an issue. Don't know. We'll deal with that in a few months. But right now, this is where I'm sitting. I got an 85% chance that I have kidney cancer. And in a couple of weeks, I'm going to lose my kidney if it is actually cancer. But I think that is that is where we, we end this video for now. If and I, you know, I'll go ahead and since it's not a super sad video, really, it's just more so information dump. Uh, but if you want to, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, click the bell that is right next to it. You get notified whenever we post a new video. You can also follow on Instagram and Facebook, uh, those social media platforms that people love. If you want to send messages and stuff like that too, we will read all of those and and uh, you know, uh, and we really do enjoy interacting with uh, with. The people who do send us messages um but i think that's all i got for this one i'll see you next time on crocs in the kitchen bye